Hey ho, I'm Blunty the Frog. And in, <laughs> I don't know why I did that. In any case, in this, the next sequential chunk of images and waffle that constitute my wall-to-wall -wall review of the new premium position snapper from Olympus, the Pen EP5, it's time to boil down how well it does video. Once more, it's worth the reminder that the review unit I'm working with here is a pre-production piece of hardware and it was humming away on unfinalized firmware, so further refinement and tweaking may very well happen by the time it hits shelves for you to throw money at in return for photographic satisfaction. Now then, moving pictures. To frame this, Olympus has never actually been particularly good at this, it doesn't seem to be a priority for them sadly, but that said, the Pen EP3 has served me very well as a workhorse I do almost all of my desktop stuff with, it's just not much chop out in the field as it were. Having some problems with its low bitrate and interlacing issues because it packs up a 1080-60i video feed into a 30p file package. But encouragingly, with the EP5, they've moved away from that, and we now seem to be dealing with a proper native 30p feed. Sadly, that's all there is. No 24p, no 25p, and 50 or 60p is but a pipe dream, so filmmakers who rely on such standards will be let down here. But for travel videos, for family stuff, and indeed for YouTube production of nearly any kind, 30p will do perfectly fine. Aliasing, for the jargon retarded, that's the jaggies you see in the fine geometry like these cables and train tracks, can be a slight issue. On the other hand, the resolution and detail resolved is quite nice, and frankly I'd rather have sharp images than the softening that is often used to minimize aliasing problems. It's easy to knock the edges off a bit than try to sharpen it in post. Colors, just like in stills mode as we saw in the previous video, are typically punchy and pretty Olympus fare and it deals very well indeed with wide dynamic range scenes. You can shoot in a flatter picture profile if you like, but for the record, all of the stuff you're seeing here is straight off the camera and shot in either the natural or vivid default picture profiles. There's been no extra fiddling or fine tuning of any kind. Tones are usually quite smooth and motion tracks nicely, and there's very little issue with rolling shutter problems and other such artifacting, and of course you can run in any mode you like, either fully auto, P mode, aperture or shutter priority, and indeed full manual, so you've got complete and utter control over your exposure and how much motion blur you want in your images. The files generated themselves are easy to work with .mov files containing a H.264 encoded stream. There is an issue which will crop up from time to time though, regardless of your mode, your settings, your lens or anything else involved, and it has to do with the rather low bitrate you're stuck with. Just 20 megabits per second. In most cases, you won't notice it, but every now and again, especially in scenes with very high detail and moderately rapid movement, big chunks of it can crunch right up with some nasty ass macro blocking. I only hit the issue a couple of times, but it did render the shots it affected hideously useless. If we're lucky, the encoding algorithms at fault in the firmware can be refined to reduce or eliminate the issue, or maybe they can just bump up the bitrate a bit, but for right now, it's something to keep an eye on. Back on the good news side of the fence, if you do need to slap it into a semi-auto mode, like aperture priority for instance, the adjustments to shutter speed to keep it an even exposure when moving from deep shadow to direct sunlight are handled unusually smoothly actually. The usual obvious stepping is nearly entirely undetectable. So they've got that much right. And although the lovely new focus peaking feature frustratingly only works in stills mode, the screen itself is sharp enough to make a fairly easy job out of pulling manual focus in video mode. Now, of course it's not ideal, but it can be done. The workaround is to quickly switch to a stills mode, lock in your focus using the peaking, or if you're doing a focus pull, rehearse it a few times to get a feel for where the focus ring needs to start and stop at, then switch back to video mode and actually perform it. It's better than nothing, but like I said in the hardware review, I really hope focus picking comes to video mode in an update. The various autofocus modes include single autofocus, continuous autofocus, and tracking autofocus. All work well, but the best way to show those off to you will be in the head-to-head -head video shootout with its predecessor, the EP3, which is coming up soon. You'll really see how big of a leap forward those systems have taken in the EP5. 
In low light, performance continued to be relatively impressive. You're forced into a more restricted selection of ISO settings as video mode can't actually use any of the expanded options, so ISO 200 is your base and ISO 3200 is your top option. The good news is that above this is where noise becomes an issue anyway, so at least the limit still leaves you with quite clean looking footage. And the very best thing about shooting video with the EP5 is that marvelously clever 5 axis image stabilization. It's it's near magical. Long lens or wide, indoors or out, it works miraculously well to smooth out all the jitters and wobbles and wibbles and bumps in a very fluid and natural looking way, while still letting you push and pull and pan without things getting jumpy or weird like some stabilization systems can be in video mode. I'm even doing this stuff one-handed, in my non-primary left hand no less. Need proof? I'm just going to check my Twitter here for a moment. One-handed, walking briskly, in a crowd, not even looking at the camera, in difficult lighting conditions, and I'm still getting surprisingly smooth footage. It's, <laughs> it's a stupidly impractical example, I know, but it sure gets the point across, huh? In fact, all of the video in this review was shot handheld. It's simply that reliable. Just like the OMD EM5, the stabilization system does make a slight humming noise when it's active, but it's even quieter than the OMD EM5s, and I didn't even notice it until I was in a tunnel alone, under countless tons of rock, on an island, with absolutely no operating machinery or people or traffic or anything else. And to the best of my ears ability, I could hear no trace of it on the camera's own recorded audio, even from the onboard mics, so not a problem in the real world. The onboard audio is... Okay, but as with pretty much any camera, the onboard mics are just okay, and an external mic will be a much better bet any and every time, either with a separate audio recorder like I usually work with, or if you need to go right into the camera, unfortunately there's no microphone input socket, but it will work perfectly fine with Olympus's existing microphone adapter that goes in the hot shoe smart connection thingy. So, conclusion. It's not a serious filmmaker's friend like a few of Panasonic's own Micro Four Thirds cameras. The very popular GH2, the new GH3, and the new G6, for example, have all become darlings of the budget filmmakers. And it's mainly because the EP5 has that low bitrate. It locks you into 30p and the poor audio options. I don't see this little bugger becoming a best friend of the low budget movie maker, but the video it spits out is undeniably quite nice looking. And that stabilization is utterly glorious. You've got complete manual control available and the general handling of the camera makes shooting very, very easy. So for everybody else with less specific and less specialized needs than filmmakers, it will be a reliable little workhorse that makes getting good looking video pretty simple. All right then, in the next video, we'll be looking at how it goes with fully manual adapted lenses, because that's something else the Micro Four Third system is really good at, using all kinds of lenses adapted onto it. We'll be looking at stills and video in that review, and following that, I'll be putting it up against the EP3 in a head-to-head -head shootout, and that one in particular will very clearly show how much crisper the video has become, and what a massive difference the new stabilization system makes, and, as I said before, how much better the focus system has become. But, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.